I could have yours though. Grandparents saw it give me a heap of stuff. They gave me their uh, three year old sharp inverter, high powered microwave, I never ever used it. They only use it once and that's it, and they just sat there unused on their bench top. So, yeah, that was good. Got a pretty much new microwave now, a lot bigger than this one. So, I'm gonna keep this good old Whirlpool one as a spare. Good microwave there. That's only 850 watt of the Whirlpool one. The uh, one I got from my grandparents is 1200 watts, a high powered model. We gave it this old shaver, Remington, made in America. How good is that, eh? An American made Remington before the Chinese, uh, they relocated to China. Even the Philips shavers are now made in China. They used to be the last made in Europe, or made in Holland, the Philips ones. Looks like I just clips together, so I can undo these metal clips and I can be able to pull this shaver apart and change the battery in it. Because I reckon it worked fine only when it was plugged in. It is foam or whatever that stuff is, it's just gone rotten. Looks like foam seal. Yeah, it's got a bit of foam right in there. We'll get this open, it's quite heavy. This might have a little uh, linear supply or something in it. It's, a metal, it's double insulated. A metal plate there. 240 volt, 50 hertz, 10 watt Remington. Model 8MS3K, made in America. So, let's plug it and give it a test. Original cord. Let's have a look here. What's the spec say? Approved by all Australian electrical authorities. Nice and old, this one. Remington shavers are double insulated for your protection. Nice old school. I used to have another one like this, but it wasn't quite as old as this one. But it, yeah, it's been thrown out years ago. I was a bit young then, to know, uh, yeah, to know at the time. And that's the original box for it. And under that are the instructions. 1983, aha, there's a date, 1983, printed in America. Wow, it's that old. 83, that's my parents got married. Oh yeah. Chromium edge blades, head assembly, the head guard, that's all in there too. All complete. Wow, well, look at this. Used to have one of those powder sticks, that's long gone now. Something 968th Street. Yeah, that place no longer exists now. Something else is there now. Something over the bells. Yeah, that place is gone now. Yeah, it's closed down years ago. Rank Electric Housewares, incorporated in New South Wales. That's the supplier. I used to import these. Anyway, let's give this a bit of a uh, test. It does still work. The batch is long dead. Oh, I'm gonna see if there's anything in the book about that. Uh, doesn't say nothing about. Oh, the voltage selector. Ah, underneath this comes off as a voltage selector switch. Let's give this thing a plug and give it a test. I'll put it all back together first before I run it. Plug it in. Alright. Now this doesn't have a switch on it, so I'm just gonna just gonna plug it in and use it uh main to turn it on. Wow, it's not a motor at all. Oh, I see how it works, yeah! That's why it's heavy. It's a um a uh, vibrator type, it doesn't have an electric motor in it, a little DC motor. Modern shavers have a little cheap DC motor in them. They run off a backup battery on some models, and they can run it wirelessly. This one's like those newer ones, a hairdresser ones, you have like a coil, and it vibrates a, uh, an arm. That's how it works. Hmm, still works. Wow. This works better than the normal new one I've got. Works very well. How good is that? Wow. That works very well. Better than the new ones I've got. It doesn't pinch either. What a nice quality shaver. 
Okay. Well, I'll quick open it up just to see how it works. I've got an idea how it works now. So I'll get these little clips out of here and carefully open it up because I don't want to wreck this. But yeah, usually they are the coil principle, as I'll show you later. Okay, well, it's a bit harder than I thought to get this thing apart. I've got to pull those clips out, but they actually are they're pretty firmly. And if I do, I'm probably going to lose them. Since this thing is nice and vintage and American made and it's good quality, I'm going to keep it as it is. But basically you've got a, like a coil and a magnet and it just ma moves an arm. The mains frequency of the magnet magnetism just moves the arm like that. I fought a Chinese one of these apart a couple of times, did some videos and it was one where I burnt a coil out of one of them. Nothing special but... These are three separately moving parts and this foam is what's gone rotten there. Foam rot here. Look at the mess it's made. So I get me here and give this a clean, I give this a bit of a clean under the tap. Get this foam rot out of it. Look at the quality of it. The newer shavers aren't even that solid, that's quite heavy there too. The new Chinese ones aren't that heavy either. And sub models are expensive to replace those too. There we go, let's give it a good clean. It's quite a good little unit actually. So underneath that little plate, you've basically got a, a coil with a tap in the middle of it. So you got, you got a, on the end of the tap, you have the 240 volt in the center of that winding, 110 volt. That's where you would switch this to 110 volts if you're in overseas in America or something like that in its native country. So pretty simple how it works. Personally, I find these ones are actually quite more reliable, the coil principle that runs off the mains frequency. Now I could plug it into my VFD and have it off, uh, run it off different frequencies, but that might be a bit funny, having it run off different frequencies other than 50 hertz, but it probably won't vibrate as effectively, because this is designed to run best on 50 hertz to get the most movement. This thing will rock backwards and forwards. Anyway, that'll be enough for now. Thanks for watching.